Welcome to the Creating a Project in Chroma Trace tutorial. Chroma Trace is a heat trace configuration tool developed by Chromalox engineers. It's designed to quickly and easily help you determine the bill of materials for your heat trace project. We'll create a simple project to show you how it works. To begin a new project, you can select New from the toolbar, or you can select the Chroma Trace logo in the upper left hand corner. Select the New option from the menu. From the New Project window, we can choose to create a blank project, or we can choose to create a project based on a template. I'm going to select the Blank option and click the Create button. You'll notice that a random number appears for the name of the project. This number also appears in the tab of the project above. We need to give this a more meaningful name. I'm going to call this My Heat Trace Project. Then I'm going to click the Save icon on the toolbar. Now my tab displays the name I've changed it to, My Heat Trace Project. I can click the X in the tab to close my project out. My Heat Trace Project now displays in the Recent Project list. I can click that link to open the project back up. Let's look at the other entries that are available in the project. A template can be created and then files created from that template so that the original information in the template is never overwritten. This is very useful if you have projects that are similar in nature. It saves a lot of data entry. We're just going to create a simple project, so we'll leave this blank. Catalog is a revision number of the data catalog used for the project. This can be used when there are updates to a previous version and you want to save historical data. There is no automatic versioning. If you want to save a past version of your project, you'll need to do a save as to maintain the history. The number field is a number for your heat trace design project. The project number will appear on all reports generated by the program. This is useful if you have multiple projects based on the same template. We'll just enter one here for our project. The reference number is used for a customer number. Promalux employees may want to use the reg number for this customer number. Other users may have their own numbering system that they care to use. We'll enter a fictitious reg number here for our example. The customer field is the customer name. I'm going to enter Acme Company. Facility is where the heat trace project is to be used. I'll enter Warehouse here. Designer is the name of the person creating the heat trace project. I'll enter my name here. I can choose my unit of measures, imperial or metric. I'm going to leave the default imperial in my project. And I can enter comments or descriptions in my description box to help me remember what my project's about. I'll enter a brief description here. Then I'll click Save to save my project. So we've defined and described our project, but we haven't entered any components into our project yet. The tabs in the navigation panel allow me to move back and forth through them to access the components that I have entered. I have lines, tanks, and control panels. The line, tank, and control panel tools on the toolbar are used to add new components to your project. I'll click on the line tool and add a line to my project. I see the new line 1 added in my navigation panel under lines. That's the default name for the line. In the middle section, we see the detailed tabs for the new line that we just created. The first tab is the line tab. I'm going to click on the icon to expand the details of that section. Here we see the general information details for the line. The name, the new line 1, was the default name for the line. We're not going to make any changes in this section. We're only going to make changes to the required field. If you feel unsure of an entry, you can use the online help to see a definition of the field. You'll see this icon in various parts of the screen. Let's click on the one beside line. The pop-up window provides definitions for each entry in this section. You can close this window by clicking anywhere outside of the help window or by clicking back on the help icon again. The right hand section of the screen displays the calculations. You'll see these calculations begin to populate as we make entries into the project. You'll notice the indicators on the tabs are red or green. The green indicators show that there are not any required fields here. The red indicators indicate you have to make an entry there for the project to be complete. I'm going to expand the details for the pipe and insulation section. 
The required fields are highlighted in red. You'll see the only required field in this section is the link. I'm going to enter 50 for the pipe length. You'll notice when I move to the next field that the red highlighting is gone because the required field has been filled in. Let's go to the next section that requires fields, the temperature and environment. All of the entries under the temperature section are required, so they're highlighted in red. The first field is maintain. This is the temperature that the pipe or tank should not go below. This temperature can vary with different fluids or types of processes. The temperature to be maintained cannot be lower than the minimum ambient temperature. I'm going to enter 50 for my temperature to maintain. Startup temperature is the lowest pipe or equipment temperature expected when the heating cables are switched on. It might be the minimum ambient temperature, but realistically will often be higher. Startup temperature is used to calculate the maximum current at the startup temperature. This is particularly important for self-regulating heating cables. For self-regulating heating cables which draw more current at a lower temperature, the startup temperature impacts the maximum circuit length allowed since longer circuit lengths will draw a higher current at lower temperatures. If you anticipate the heating cables will never need to be started cold, then you should select a more realistic startup temperature to allow the use of longer circuit lengths. This temperature cannot be less than the minimum ambient temperature. I'm going to enter 40 for my startup temperature. The minimum ambient temperature is the lowest ambient temperature that the pipe will experience. This temperature is normally constant for the entire job, except in a situation where there are indoor and outdoor piping or tanks. The minimum ambient temperature cannot be less than minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to enter zero for my minimum ambient temperature. The maximum ambient temperature is the highest short-term temperature the heater will experience from the pipe or tank. This could be caused from process temperature spikes or from periodic steam cleaning of the pipe or tank. Let's enter 100 for the maximum ambient temperature. Maximum exposure for power on is the highest anticipated ambient pipe or fluid temperature to which the heating cable will be exposed continuously with the power on. I'm going to enter 100 for this value. Maximum exposure power off is the highest anticipated pipe or fluid temperature to which the heating cable will be exposed continuously with the power off. I'm going to enter 150 for this one. Maximum allowable for the pipe is the highest temperature that the pipe contents can be permitted to attain. We'll put 150 in here. Now that we have all our required entries in there, we'll go ahead and collapse this section and move on to the heater section for the required fields there. Our last required field is the voltage. We'll enter 240 here. You'll notice that my calculations over here are beginning to populate. I see that I have a heat loss calculation now. And I'm going to save my project now that I have all of my required fields in. I'm going to click the save icon in the toolbar. Look at the right hand section of the screen under the calculation panel. You see that all of this information is populated based on your entries and the application is recommending a self-regulating heater cable. Cable model SRL3-2CT. Now I can generate my bill of materials so that I can place the order for my heat trace project. If you look at the bottom of the navigation panel, you'll notice that beside the navigation tab, there's a report tab as well. I'm going to click the report tab and Chromatrace automatically generates my bill of materials showing me all of the different parts that I need with the PCNs for the Chromalox parts that I need to order. If I want to print my report, I can use the print icon in the bill of material window. You'll notice to the right of that, there's a couple of icons for previewing the print and for changing the print setup. Or I could save as a file. I have the option to save as an Excel, PDF, or Word file. If I'm finished with my project, I might want to request a quote from Chrome Locks. We can do that very simply by using the Request Quote tool on the toolbar. My Request Quote form will automatically populate with the information that I put into my registration when I set up my Chrome Locks application. The only field that you might want to fill in are the comments. You can add some additional comments or questions in that box. Click the send button and that will be sent to Chrome Locks. Somebody will be in touch with you about your quote. 
There are a lot of other reports available to you other than just the Bill of Material report. If you look in the left-hand panel for reports, you'll see that under Lines, you have several different reports available there. If you also have tanks and panels, you can have reports for those as well. Let's go back to the Navigation tab. I want to show you some shortcuts for entering your information into your project. A simple way to populate your project is by copying your components. I'm going to go ahead and select the new line 1 that we already created, and I'm going to click the Copy tool on the toolbar. You could right-click and use the pop-up menu as well for copy. Then I'm going to click back down here in my line section. Then I'm going to click the Paste tool to create a duplicate of that line. The new line is called New Line 1, Copy 1. Let's click that line to select it. Expand the Temperature Environment section. You'll notice that the values you filled in for New Line 1 are populated in this new line that you copied. All of the settings that you created in New Line 1 will be included in this line. Let's expand the line section general information. Select the text in the name box and let's rename that to New Line 2. And we'll save our project again to make sure that we have all those changes. We're going to change the length of the pipe. Expand the pipe insulation section. Select the existing entry and change it to 30. Let's go back and take a look at our Bill of Materials report again. Notice that the amount of cable has updated to 80 feet. Any other items that we might need additionally have been updated as well. It's that simple. Other time-saving shortcuts in Chroma Trace include our Import feature and the Global Copy command. The Global Copy command will allow you to copy a value from one line to all of the other lines in your project. It can be used for tanks and control panels too. For more information on those features, see our other tutorials or visit the online help.